We're here at Lake Clark National Park. We're at Natural Habitat Adventures Alaska Bear Camp. Here in bear country, we're heading to the, each of these individual sites overlooking this beautiful critical wildlife habitat uh, where the bears come in and congregate and they're mostly feeding on sedges. From a photographer's perspective, um, we're getting different angles on these bears and each time we're coming up, we're checking the scene, see what kind of actors are out there, our bears. And from there, it really influences what kind of photos we're gonna be taking. I'm shooting with a Sony A1. I've got the 200 to 600 lens on it. It's useful to have a good bit of zoom out here. That being said, we can make any camera work. It's all about your eye as an artist, as a photographer, and the composition you're gonna make off of that. And here in Chinitna Bay, uh, we see that the conditions are constantly changing and it's super challenging as a photographer, but it's also exciting at the same time. Right now, we've got some sun coming out through one of the holes in the clouds, which is super great. That'll give us some beautiful kind of silhouette light for our bears. Um, but we could easily lose that and now start thinking how we're gonna shoot in low light. Here we're seeing the cloud cover is changing lighting pretty consistently. And so that's where the patience is gonna come in and be ready for that shot when the light reveals itself to be a nice, beautiful golden hour. We're here now, it's uh, 10 o'clock at night here in Alaska and we're just now getting some of that beautiful golden hour light. And it's gonna last quite a while. That's one of the benefits of being up here as far north as we are here in Lake Clark National Park is that sun takes a long time to set. And so we get a long time with that golden hour. It's important here in Lake Clark National Park to not only tell the story of up close bears, but also to tell the story of bears in the landscape. And so we have the beautiful mountain ranges here of the Aleutian Range, as well as the Alaska Range. There's a couple different things you can think about when positioning bears in landscapes. If they're at a reasonable distance, uh, you want, might want to think about the rule of thirds. Now, these bears are far enough away that it makes more sense to not really think about the rule of thirds, but to think more about having that landscape shot and setting up the composition with the beautiful mountains, the sky in the background, but having those bears still in the scene. And so oftentimes I don't put them at the very bottom, but uh, give them a little bit of breathing room uh, maybe when you're looking through your, your frame, maybe half inch to an inch above uh, your viewfinder so you can get a chance to see those bears very easily in the frame. And if you want to do some cropping, you have some breathing room so those bears don't get cropped out. Getting those bears visible in your shot, but they're still going to look fairly small. And the key here is you want them recognizable as bears. And so you may have to wait for those bears to move in just the right position so they're silhouetted. So you get that beautiful bear profile. There, then it's gonna be easily recognizable to your audience, whoever's happened to look at the photo. Something that I like to talk about a lot with uh, my photography guests is you have to make your zoom work. Whatever you happen to have with you is gonna be the best camera, regardless if it's a 200, 600 that I've got here on my Sony A1 or if you happen to have a smartphone. So uh, we have these two sibling bears here, they're probably three to five years old, that are wrestling with each other. Uh, and so it looks a lot like bear fighting you'll see during a mating season, um, but we get a chance to see this um, before they, they have grown up to mate. Um, they're wrestling with each other, they're play fighting, and we can tell because of uh, the fact that there's no noise. When there is bear noise, you're hearing the growling and the snarling, um, that's very aggressive. Um, but in this case, they're just wrestling around with each other. And so now we can start thinking about shooting action shots. From here, we're now we're thinking about shutter speeds much higher. Uh, one over a thousand, one over two thousand is oftentimes where you want to start. Uh, and unfortunately, you're going to have to compensate. Um, you're dropping your aperture down um, so you can let in as much light as possible. And so right now I'm shooting at an f6.3 and my ISO is sitting uh, right around 2000. Um, so it's a lot higher than I would like it, um, but if I'm going to catch that, those kinds of action shots in this low light, that's the concession I'm going to have to make. And maybe in uh, post-processing I can fix that. So we've got these two bears coming through the grass right here. And I'm thinking about shots where I'm trying to stay a little bit higher than eye level. 
And the reason for this is grass is quite tall. And uh, if we're too low, we're gonna just be mired in the grass. So we're getting a little bit higher up. And now a couple things I'm thinking about here is particularly how I wanna focus uh, because a lot of the grass is gonna catch the focus of your camera, uh, your autofocus. And so I'm using uh, uh, tracking uh, on my autofocus. If your camera has that, that's great. If not, uh, you may wanna think about taking a lot of photos and try to keep resetting your autofocus, either clicking your shutter halfway down, or if you use back button focus, use that as well, and try to get that shot in amongst the grass. So the shot I'm thinking about here is a much closer shot. Uh, so I'm using my 200 to 600 millimeter lens, taking it all the way out to 600 and I'm looking for these bears um, as they lift their head up from grazing and either looking towards me or looking towards the open side of the frame and getting a nice shot. Um, now you can think about creating that beautiful bokeh, which is that fuzziness around the bear that really draws the focus to just the area you want that's in, in sharp focus, right? And so uh, in this case, we're shooting at an f-stop that's much lower. Um, in this case, I'm shooting at f7.1. And these bears are moving a little bit, but not too fast. And so I'm around 1 over 400 to 1 over 600, depending on how the light's changing out here. When taking shots of these bears at eye level, I can be very powerful to flip your camera from shooting a typical horizontal or landscape orientation and flipping it to vertical or portrait. And what that allows you to do is center on that bear and really draw the focus of your viewer in on that bear as it's grazing. And so now just patiently waiting as they're grazing, waiting for that head to pick up in just the right moment. And now getting that shot. We're very patiently waiting for these two bears to come out on the meadow. So we put ourselves in a position where um, if they wanted to, they could come closer. Um, we're not approaching too much in their general direction. Uh, and so we're just staying low, we're staying quiet, and letting these bears do what they do naturally. And as a wildlife photographer, that's what I want to capture, is their natural behavior in their natural environment. In this case, we've got the bear looking away, and oftentimes we get bear butts. That makes a great end to your photo album, let me tell you. But when we've got this bear actively grazing, it's going to consistently be changing its position. And so we're going to keep looking and thinking creatively how we can make a shot out of this. And of course, with us being close, we're thinking about some of our close-up shots, getting the full frame face, um, uh, try to get close-ups of the fur, or some details that make bears bears, right? Their claws, their ears, their teeth, even their nose. I want to stress that it's super important to not only think about those close-ups, but now you have an opportunity with a very close bear to really show off the landscape and the background. So again, taking your shot from a landscape or horizontal, flipping it to vertical or portraiture, and now you're including those mountains that make Alaska great in the background. And then if you get an opportunity where that bear is headed towards you, this is another perfect example of using portrait. Because when that bear is now in that vertical form, it really highlights that vertical form in a portrait shot. And so don't be hesitant to flip your camera sideways. Or if you've got the megapixels, um, you can crop later if need be. Uh, but it can make a quite impressive shot if it's looking down the barrel right at you. Our patience has definitely paid off here. These bears are very comfortable with us. And we've got an opportunity now to sit and get the shots we were hoping for.